Hello, you're watching Hard Video Order Stuff and welcome back my friends. For you today, I give you my opinion of Canon's 24mm f2.8 pancake lens for video. I'm gonna be scrutinizing its features, checking out the build quality, the image quality compared to other lenses, and I'll give you my pros and cons. Be sure to check the links below, that's the best way to support the channel. Now, let's do it. This lens has many pancakey features. It's a fixed 24 mm prime lens designed for APS-C sensor cameras. What happens if you use it on full frame? Well, as you can see here, you get heaps of vignette. This is a shot on a Sony a7S II. A really great thing about this lens is its tiny weight at only 125 grams, which makes it really good for gimbal work. The STM stepping motor focusing system is heralded for being very quiet and well, it's focused by wire electronic focusing, so I wouldn't recommend using it for manual focus. Ever wondered just how quiet it is? Well, let's compare it to the ultrasonic motor found on Canon's L lenses. Here you can see I'm using a very high quality mic and I've got it really close to the lenses. And as you could hear, the 24mm sort of hums and the USM lenses click, although the 16 35 is very quiet as well. It has a filter thread of 52mm, which is a smaller and less common size, so you may need step up or step down rings if you're using larger filters. But how's the build quality? For an extremely low priced lens, the build quality is actually decent. It's made from mainly plastic, of course, but the lens mount is metal. I'd say it's not quite as nicely built as Canon's 35mm f2 or many of the other USM type lenses. But overall, I'm impressed. It's built better than I was expecting for the low, low price. The only strange thing for me was the tiny lens cap. <laughs> it's not a criticism, as it's exactly the size it needs to be. I was just surprised when I first saw it, that was all. I'd also say the focus ring isn't great. It's smooth enough, but then it's tiny. It's right at the end of the lens, and of course it isn't very accurate because it's a focus by wire system. Now, let's compare the image quality to some other lenses. So, this is Canon's 24mm and then Canon's 16-35 f4, and then Canon's 24-70 f4. When we look at them side by side and zoom into 400%, the difference is almost imperceivable. I would give the 16-35 the slight edge, but that is a very sharp lens. I'd usually stay away from focus by wire lenses because they're not great for manual focus for video, but this lens is built with autofocus in mind. So I can see this lens as being a really good first prime lens that you buy for crop sensor cameras. A really nice choice for gimbal work, although I really wish it had image stabilization. And obviously, if you're traveling light and you, read, you just need the lightest, smallest footprint possible, then it's gonna be a good choice as well. So what are the pros and cons? First, the pros and the obvious ones are this lens is amazingly small size and weight which makes it really handy for all the things that I just mentioned before. <laughs> Next is the price, which is just so skinny. I mean, how can you not like this kind of value? Do uh, check the links below. I, I believe I bought it for somewhere around hundred pounds uh, at the time. So just check, check them now, it may have changed. Also, it's an f2.8 lens, which seems to be the aperture that starts to get people excited. Like f4, nah, not interested. F2.8 or lower? Oh yeah, give me some of that. <laughs> Finally, this lens focuses nicely and has decent image quality, which are both pretty important, I'm told. But what about the cons? Firstly, and I know this would increase the size and weight of the lens, but I would have loved it to have image stabilization. This lens, as it is, only weighs 125 grams, so how much do you think it would have been if it had image stabilization? Let me know, I'm just curious. Let me know what you think. Secondly, it's the nature of this type of lens, but the construction does feel a tad plasticky. Again, 
If it wasn't, it would dramatically add to the weight, but I feel like if I was to drop this lens, I'm not sure how well it would fare. And lastly, this is partly a niggle of the Canon EOS R, but it switches automatically to crop mode when you attach the lens, and I understand why this lens is designed for crop sensor bodies, but I just prefer to have the option to do it myself, that's all. So, now to my final opinion. It's a good lens. The build quality is okay, the image quality is better than it has any right to be at this price, and it's tiny, tiny in size and weight. So it's a good lens. It's certainly not a great lens. If for this to be the case, it would need to have image stabilization, be built with more sturdy materials, have a larger maximum aperture, and probably cost a whole lot more. Of course, all of these things would also detract from its, well, one of its main selling points, which is its tiny size and weight. So it's a fairly unique little lens that you will either need or not need. So my suggestion is to buy it or don't buy it. And that's it for now. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I've got a large back catalogue of videos about video on this channel of which YouTube recommends this one for you. And my latest upload will be just underneath. If you're not already subscribed, then definitely do it. Hit the blob over this side. And until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.